we are here with Joe Saxton. Oh, it's so lovely, Joe, to, to see you. Uh, Joe Saxton was going to be one of the speakers at the Leadership Conference at the Royal Albert Hall. Mm -hmm. She's an author, speaker, leadership coach, raised in London, lived in Minneapolis for the last 15 years, married to Chris, two teenage children. She's the founder of ESA. She's the author of at least four books, uh, and particularly the one that that is, I think, the most recent, Ready to Rise. Will you start by telling us about your childhood, where you grew up? Yeah, um, I grew up in London, mainly, um, South London, and I was born to Nigerian parents. My, a number of my family still live in London and, and had a period of time when I was fostered and during that time was in Taunton for some of the time there. And, um, and during that time, I, was, um, I lived with a, one of my brothers and my, a lady who we called Aunt May. It's been amazing to watch your ministry grow. I remember you coming to speak at our focus at our church holiday and I just say a bit about um, just how your, your passion to train up women leaders and to, for people to see the true role of women in the Bible and now in our society. I remember I, I did Hebrew at university and I remember looking at this word and, and seeing it unpacked and it was it, it was like this detonating impact in my mind to realize that this word was a combination of words to rescue, to be strong and to save. Um, as you said, not the sous chef, but actually one with the resources to help that more often um, like we see it refer to God and and again knowing being, we're being made in the we've been made in the image of God it was it's such a deep resonance and I over the years both in the UK and in the US I kept on um as I was speaking or serving or just in the community meeting women who were like brimming with potential so many gifts and talents in a range of ways whether it was at home whether it was in their community whether it was in the church or in business who were second guessing sec and who were almost how can I describe it? It was like they were hiding their gifts and calling it humility, hiding how hiding their commission and kind of putting it to the side. And because they were like, oh, well, am I too much? Am I not enough? Who do I think I am? Is this arrogant of me to believe this, to step into this? And um, some of it, Nikki was at, and, and Pippa, I think it was a sense of what is the cost to the kingdom? All these dreams that are just dying in people's minds. <laughs> um, and and are guiltily kind of hid away and left unwrapped and so I, it began um initially with conversations and coming alongside women who were leading or exploring and and wrestling with their call and and if you sit on something that god's calling you to long enough it, it just gets it can be quite painful to unpack so that's where where the journey began really and now We've moved more, and about a year ago, we moved from rather than gathering in a, an event space, um, meeting online and coaching women to say, let's step into what God's called you to do. And, um, and let's think practically about what that means and, and the challenges you face. And how have you survived COVID and what do you, what do you feel you've learned during this season? Oh, I mean, Pippa. <laughs> I mean, it's it has been really challenging it was really challenging because the book was about to come out there was a tour I was coming over to be with you see my mum um hanging out with her and all of these things that were just all a gift and so to see it evaporate what um at short notice and obviously I speak at a lot of events both in the church but also in co corporate spaces we, we can't gather <laughs> healthily so there is the income piece there is the calling piece there is the vision board that you might as well set fire to piece of it all and um and and us all in all at home and so the first i think the first while was shock and grieving to be honest grieving the losses of and the, and the uncertainty and just like god i don't know what's happening i know you're here because you've never left however what is going on and um how do we get through this and I found myself remembering the ways in which the Lord had pulled, um, pulled me through hard times before and said, okay, same God, different storm, not a pleasant storm, but, um, but, but God's here. And so I think a lot of it has, I spent a lot of time in um, Matthew chapter 14, which begins with the beheading of John the Baptist and then the feeding of the 5,000 and then Jesus walking on the water to Peter and just this tumultuous chapter of instability and thinking, okay, Okay, we see pressure, we see instability, we see uncertainty, and we see God there. You you put out a message very soon after it, after George Floyd had been murdered, 
and it was obviously very raw for you at the moment at that moment and because uh, since then a lot of people have, have got some much more prepared language for the whole thing but yeah. in that moment yeah. it was just raw emotion and yeah. what you were feeling at that moment and i think you you were you, you were actually in tears speaking mm. about it yeah um but it wasn't like a prepared statement it was no. like it was an instant reaction to that now just say about what you were feeling in that moment yeah and i mean in that moment it was devastated i just felt devastated and tired so tired um of of, of again another name that's attached to a hashtag and and overwhelmed as my because and my children were weeping i was weeping my husband is weeping my friends are weeping and it's a similar and, and and where we say to each other, I'm tired of feeling tired about this. Is it ever going to change? I'm tired of feeling unsafe because I don't, because in those moments, I don't feel safe. I'm tired of, I'm, I'm scared for my, my friend's sons. Um, and I felt like I don't know how to put this into words in a way that helps us understand that we cannot go on. I mean, there is a different reaction now. It's not, this is not the same as anything that I've experienced in my lifetime. Mm. It feels now like this is, this is a kind of historic moment globally, mm -hmm. the response. And do you feel that? Do you feel now that this is something that is, is um, really, you know, the, I, you know, what I feel like is I'm not going to allow racism. I, I will not give up until racism is obliterated in our society. Yeah. And do you, think, do you feel that people are, that, that is that sort of sense now, that sort of determination that we, yeah. this, we, we have to change our world? Um, I, yes and no. I, I think I'm seeing some who are weary already, like they feel the kind of crisis fatigue. There's COVID, there's worries about employment, legit worries, and who are like, oh, I can't do any anymore. But I cannot deny that I have been surprised. Like I went to a protest and my, da my daughter said, let's go to a protest in our neighborhood. And I, got, I went there and I said to her, we were going to a, a um, protest thing that had been organized. And I said, how many people do you think are gonna be there? And she's like, I don't know. And I said, is there gonna be three of us and a local puppy? I mean, what's gonna be happening here? And then we turned the corner and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, most of whom are white. Um, the vast majority of whom are white who are listening to these young adults, um, high schoolers and college kids who are black kids, Latino kids, white kids saying, we need to change things, we need to change things and seeing every generation there. And uh, I remember this uh, older gentleman, he must've been in his seventies with this sign saying black lives matter. And, and hearing people um, walk, walk in the neighborhoods and the road is, um, they, they've moved the traffic and people are scrolling down their windows, beeping their horns and, and simply peacefully standing. And I, rem and I said, I remember writing um, to our kind of local Facebook. I said, that's where I, I felt hope. And I felt like I wasn't, I, it wasn't just our problem. It wasn't just, oh, racism is a problem for black people to have to handle. It felt like our community was rising. And in that moment, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very glad I had my sunglasses on because I just, <laughs> it was just a mess, just wet the whole time, just the whole time, because I'd yeah. never seen anything like that. I've never seen such a, a tangible and then and a practical day we had people signing up for things it, it was a it was like we can organize in this way and people literally signing up for things and saying yep yeah, we're taking a stand and i think in that moment it was this okay don't give up don't 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 um let go just yet because um even if it feels small as a man's hand to you something is happening brilliant joe you're speaking to um our congregation at htv but also a lot of the church plants around the country um, mm -hmm. are, are listening to this. What would be your sort of message for the congregation at, at HTB and for the other uh, parts of the network? Yeah, um, there is a hang in there moment. Uh, but, <laughs> but I think what I'm, I'm reminded of, just as you said that, I'm, I'm probably because I've spent the past four months in it, I'm reminded of Matthew 14 and Jesus walking on the water and two things. One where he says, take courage, it's I, don't be afraid. And I would say, remember your story with God, the good things he's done, the, the one who was with you in the great times is with you in the tough times. Um, mm -hmm. 
take courage. Take courage in your story with the King of Kings. Take courage of the God who answered your small prayers, your big prayers, your impossible prayers. And yes, we're in a middle in in an emerging landscape right now. We don't know where it's going to land, but it's not a surprise to him. So stick with him. And then I would say, in the same way that Jesus said to Peter, "Come," and Peter got up in response to that word. What's the word he's given you to walk on in this storm? that causes you to get up of the thing that you're familiar with and the world you're familiar with to step into this unknown that is not really very fun. Real talk, we know it's not fun, but is where he is because he will not, he will, he will transform things for you and he'll hold you when you feel like you're drowning. Brilliant, that brilliant. Joe. That's brilliant, brilliant, Joe. Wonderful picture. Joe Saxton, thank you <laughs> oh, so, yes, so thank much. You Amazing. Very encouraging. Yeah, very wonderful. Inspiring. Wonderful.